to the church of the nation of cricket carcasses. Time to redeem the faithful, folks. It's time for the yearly sacrifice. We do this only once a year. That says per Grimner. And I thank you again, Grimner, for all you do. Time to pay your tithe to the digital gods. This is the month we do it right here. I may ask next week. Make sure we have plenty to go through the year. Helping to continue commercial free broadcasts and the space to do it. If you all have a have a broadcast in mind, uh, I'd ask you to really bring your, your best stuff. And do your do your best to do that. RLM hosting and domain uh, fees and all that stuff. All the all the digital god sacrifices that have to be done to keep going get globally, folks, is uh, due now. And if you can please donate to reallibertymedia.com. I don't know all the ways you can do it. There's all kinds, and I'm, I'm remiss to maybe have made a list. All kinds of, I think, bitcoins, all kinds of di- virtual currencies. There's a, a PayPal, I think. Uh, there's, um, you'll find it. Just find it, reallibertymedia.com. And whatever you can do. Maybe throw in a little bit more for the hardware. Because uh, if you understand, uh, we, he provides, uh, or Real Liberty Media provides archives. And they're all free as well. And those take hardware to store. And so all this gets built up over time. All these, ca- these, these pro- broadcasts get built up and it requires a hardware to be running for you to access uh, these things 24-7. Uh, 365 minus the downtime, which we just had last week, which we came back up pretty good. I hope I'm, now that I thought about it, see, all these little things, digital technical things. I think we're going out. I hope I'm going to the right place. We had a uh, IP change, and so that has to has to happen. And again, Grimner takes care of all that. It keeps up with it, so it does a good job for us to keep us going. And there's hardware behind all that. There's not that I'm saying pay for his time, but there is his time. And so, if you will, please, uh, it it provides my my ability for my voice to get out. Um, there's kind of a lot of things going on behind the scenes to keep a an internet radio b- platform running. And there's even more, more than just the broadcast. There's a whole platform that, for information that, that keeps coming out. So if you can, please, uh, those of you that can, if you can't, don't worry about it. Um, I have to be a leech too. There's just Sometimes there's just nothing you can do about it. For, for those of you that can, if you would, keep the place running. And don't, again, if I have to say it again, we offer all this. My time's uh, really list, essentially free. Um, it, it really all goes to the support of the hardware. Uh, I offer all my, all my, I wish all y'all would just know my note, all, all y'all would just know my, uh, my mind, and then I'd be stopped, I'd st- if once you knew what I, what I understood, I would stop broadcasting, but it doesn't seem that that's so easy to transmit to y'all, and so we need, we need more help, help. so, um, save the other cricket carcasses from a fate worse than death, folks. This is Behind the Woodshed BTW RLM 200. Thank you, Vince. Thanks for the shout out about that. I, to me, it's just another number. Actually, all these days are just other days. There's really nothing special in the world to me. Uh, I, I've found myself in a mission to must be done. I don't have um, really any other excuse uh, to make. And I know there's a lot of people that are on a, a gradation, graded scale about that. And um, a little bit of that was talked about on uh, Ron Stevens' show, Rock the Boat, on UCY with Duck. Uh, saying that you know there's only so much you could do and I, and I, I really do believe I had to go through that myself where there's a decision you have to make I told you about that do I, do I let the, the eagle eat me or do I let it take my tail and, and I live another day to do a better day and that's the whole point being you have to make your decisions I'm not gonna I've learned a long time ago you can't I cannot judge anyone's decision but just to make sure that you're not as I said in the, in the UCY chat make sure you're not beating your head against the same wall committing the same example that's not a learn actually showing that you're learning for you to yourself not anybody else and i just can tell you if you i don't know how people appreciate what i can bring and what i do bring i don't can bring i bring it there's some real subtleties i talk about that i think are missed by a lot of people and it's not it, it, they're they are really so large uh, a problem uh, the subtlety the problem of the subtlety is so large uh, that it becomes almost the problem that i try to uh, break through and so last week we heard uh, a little statement that says, uh, educate and inform the whole mass of the people 
They are the only sure reliance for the preservation of our liberty, as stated in, in truncated uh, paraphrase by Thomas Jefferson, put the pressure on us. We can't be crickets. And so, it's just what I've been telling you. It, there's just no way around this. And uh, we can pretend that we know. And uh, I want to talk about something else, but I'm not going to. I'm going to resist, but I will say this much. It's astonishing to me to be within groups of people um, or, and, and watch how they are, would rather talk about how much they've done that really hasn't gotten anywhere. Just the fact of them making a phone call, let's say, somewhere. How much that value was when it didn't really make any change and how much, well, how much I said or how much I typed and it does nothing but everyone's essentially proud about that action like it really did something. And it's just a condition of dysfunction. And there's a way bigger thing beyond all of that. There's a way, it, it, there's actually things you do, as if, at least as the way I've seen it, that reduces your jeopardy completely uh, to, most, to the most extent when you're going down the, the correct path. Not, not, if you're getting beat down a lot all the time, and that's your example, that's not what I'm talking about. There's none of the people, my colleagues that I work with, that are beat down, that no one is getting in trouble. And a couple of them are actually doing things that other people are not. And, be, and it's because of how we approach these things. So I, I don't know having any other guidance. You, you all don't call me much. You don't write me, I mean, at markonthebeachyahoo.com. You don't even explain what it is you'd like me to clarify. You don't explain maybe, if, uh, maybe filling out something else about what I've said. Uh, so I got to make this stuff up and I can only thing I have is a guidance that makes it easy for me with all the other demands is to go off what we call the news and I say it's notice it's telling us something whether that's fake or not that's up to that's really up to us that's part of this this game that we're in this um, whatever this is I don't even know what it is. it's not, it's like a game really it's game playing and and so we all have to find uh, the more, more I look around is the preservation of the ma by the mass of the whole the, 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 the whole of us has to be done uh, and I can only see as I work with more and more people, we, each one will bring a certain uh, skill that they have, that their life has brought to them. And it's amazing how it plugs into the bigger puzzle for all of us. And it, for me, I, I think maybe that's where I started to learn what delegation of authority was. It really wasn't just handing something to somebody. Is that that person, whoever that is, will be in your, in, or in, in your, um, with you, uh, in, in league with you, and that talent comes to aid you, and so that's what you hand off. And I can completely, uh, pretty much completely, hand over, ha trying to be uh, like holding all the reins. The, the reins I hold are the, are the ones that I can, uh, that I best fit to hold. Doesn't mean everything's perfect, and it doesn't mean that there weren't, aren't mistakes made but there's, there's no fatal mistakes made, I guess is the main thing. In other words, there's nothing so, gone so wrong that it can't be fixed or it doesn't, it's not really um, substantial enough to do anything in, in the scheme of things. I mean, but uh, you're, you're kind of unrealistic to think nothing's going to happen. If you, if you come from the, from the idea that we're in a war against us, there's no, you know, there's no war without casualties. What, I, what we're trying to do is keep everybody even out of out of the uh, medical tent and I think we do a pretty good job there's only a handful of us that do this and uh, a lot of it's I don't know what it is but this is the fact I tell you that being a cricket is not just knowing all that you think you know it's whether or not you can apply it correctly even in face of the corruption and that's a very difficult it's becoming even more more as we as if I can say we can crawl ourselves out of the stinking abyss the more difficult uh, the more steep the wall becomes I can tell you that now as we keep going and that mass of people that was supposed to be there to help is not there. In fact, I'm coming to the point where I realize there's really, we're still climbing out of this thing. There's nobody on the top to grab, a, uh, to actually help us up. We're still going to have to make the, break that corner at the top of the stinking, of, of the, of the stinking abyss. So it's going to take us to do these things. I, I don't know what else to say. People want to uh, say that, I don't know what they want to say. They say all kinds of stuff, but it's just, it's irrelevant. It's, a, it's irrelevant to the point. You either stand up and act against it where you can, as you can, and as you learn better, and you understand, if you hear something I have to say, you can get in contact me, uh, in contact with me, and we can work out whatever I, I can see you might need. Uh, specific to my, my expertise, as far as the experiences I'm talking about. 
and we see if we can get you along your path that you've chosen to to do what you can to I really believe there was something allowed to us um, by ourselves that we failed to continue it's no different than I tell you how smart were these people when I look back under mining law how and then it led us to the enabling acts for the creation of the states in the United States of America how brilliant and wise to the the reality of the world were these people to make a session of land from the state that was being created to a trustee so that they knew when they when they were disposed the land back to them the people not the government that it would be free and clear of any reservations for encroachment against their exclusive use is a fascination to me to come on to to see that I was so oblivious to that and have, well, I was completely oblivious and it had to be told to me and shows you that how far off the mark we are in the way we even perceive today. There was people not been trusting government forever, forever. And so those of you that come up and say, you know, talk about so-called statists and the, the government, the government sucks and all this other stuff. The government is not as a framework, first of all. Secondly, it's the people that get in it seem to be the, always, seems always to be and end up being a caucusocracy. And that was the thing we had to be vigilant to protect against. And we failed. We failed so much, we didn't even understand that back when the laws that provided to us to separate us from the government was done for a, re a particular way to do and make sure that was protected. We didn't even know that. So anybody that tries to define the world today I look out and I and I don't even I'm still looking for new I find new things periodically a lot less anymore I think I'm pretty getting a decent handle on this but I'm still finding things I go wow look at that is that's what that means not some dictionary definition but when you get to the application what does why did they do it like that where does that come from that they did it like that and what is the cause and effect and then for us how are we to use that because it's a, actually a tool even inside the constraint of the government. That anybody that comes with their utopian ideas and oh, they're gonna see a view this way and that way and hasn't done, the, done some research as to how, why we even have it this way, even as a corrupt as we've allowed it, which I can answer to you is our ignorance of it. And that whether that's planned or not, it's still on us to solve. That when I removed some of the ignorance from myself and the people I work with removed some of the ignorance from themselves, it's like night and day. There is no questions. We see quickly, and we almost to the point, well, we're perceived, I guess, at some point, and it, I, it's, we try to soften it, but it's perceived as a sense of arrogance. And, and that comes from, at least for myself, I jump quickly on the misdirection. I don't want to hear people being programmed by misdirection. I want them to know the foundation from which they're supposed to make these decisions and then go ahead and make sure that they can make that decision. This is what we do for everybody. We're not trying to tell anybody anything, actually. Now, I don't want to see you hurt, so I'm going to, if I see like you're going to walk out in front of a bus, I, I'm going to say, hey, come over here. I might even grab your sleeve a little bit, pull you back. You're going to run out in front of a bus. Yeah, I know I look psychic, but you are going to be hit by that bus. So how about if we don't do that for right now? Let's go do this instead. And that looks a little bit over the top. But within my, my perspective, my uh, anticipation, I tell you, work enough until you know enough that you can anticipate things. Then you start to see a different thing, uh, that you will uh, start responding different. You'll actually respond before the fact. A and this is our, our failure right now. We're so don't know what we don't know. And my only powerful example for me is this little thing that happened in the Enabling Acts. Why in, why in blazes did, they, did the state that was created as a state from a territory cede all the land back to the federal government? and then require that they cede it back to the people. What was that? I, I couldn't figure that out. And what it ends up being was the people didn't trust their government. It's a brand new government, folks. You gotta put yourself in that perspective. That these people knew, the people knew then. They didn't trust their government. It wasn't ever a question about trusting the government. It was that you couldn't trust your government. It's not trusting, we're not talking about the framework here. We're talking about the people that get in that run it off the road and down into the ditch. 
and take advantage of it the whole the whole way that they're doing it. They, then, they, then they show up with their tow truck to try and yank it back out and destroy everything. And we were supposed to stop all that. That's what we're up against. The people knew that was going to happen, that they did not allow the land to go to a trustee without a guarantee that it was going to come back free to them. You want to talk about free man on the land? You keep using these words and don't even, they're just a quaint statement. You, you think they mean something, but you don't know the foundation of it. The land had to be free, folks. You, you have to make sure, that's the chain of title stuff. You've got to make sure it was. And the, your, your enabling acts guaranteed that irrevocably, folks. Now, I say all that where there's law and remedy. And this is our problem. We're so stupid. We're, that was S-T-O-O-P-I-D for the sensitive. Uh, we are so clueless as to what the wisdom of our our own existence as men and women uh, amongst ourselves in societies is that we, we've been taken down again. And I try to come down to give you my, my view, my part of that, to remember again. I told you, I'm not so smart. I had to be reminded about the mining law. And that ends up being, because of what it is and what it does, it's the, it's the law of the land, and it's so um, consistently dealt with, that learning that, you learn everything about the land. All the types of information, all types of relationships, the, the contractual side, the fiduciary side, uh, both in contract and in, uh, in protection. You learn the straight up uh, commercial side. You, you learn the distinction. You learn, uh, co you learn the equity remedies. You learn uh, what common law is. You learn why we have roads and, and we learn the limit of it. And, and all these things I hear talk, being talked about by people with utopian ideas about in particular uh, anarchy are answered in all that if you just stop slow down and go look and see why certain things are the interesting thing is is that there is some answers that sound plausible that would justify that position but it doesn't ultimately because then you go off on other things and you don't know you've gone off on other things i can see it and i have no really i can't argue with anybody about it they're going to be settled in all this until they get a better foundation you end up being dysfunctional you, 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 you define, you, you think you're defining for you what you want, and you are, but that's not how the, the integrate, that's not integrating with the rest of the world and why we're here with even with the problems that we have. And so it's, it's, it's not I want to make an argument out of all this. I don't like to argue with my friends, certainly. I don't mind a decent argument, but right now we're at a time we, we really shouldn't be arguing. We really need to take the foundation up, grab that, keep it with us, and work from there. And that's really what I focus on. My mission is that, if you will. I, I don't know what else to do, and I tell you what, you know, I don't get into arguments with people. There's not, some, not, there's not very many people that, when we're talking, and I start to, do, I go slow now because I'm talking, I'm listening, I'm listening first, and then I listen to where they go. I, uh, when I start to respond, there's never really an argument. I don't get into an opinionated condition. See, we're all in a problem. And it's a really all a problem to solve, and it all has very similar roots. So what I look at responds almost identical in every capacity, and that's what you'll get to. You'll finally see that this uh, this is not all that. It's not a question. All this stuff has all these things that we see that are going on that are wrong, or because it went wrong, it's not right, and we allowed that to be happening. And now we have a bigger and tougher job, and it's obscured. This wrong now becomes, they call it fake news today. That's a that's a crime against you. Not the fake news, that it's a tool used to keep you from being, having disclosure of the truth and getting you to be able to at function correctly. It's still your responsibility to function correctly. So I'm, again, off my tabs. <laughs> I do that. Uh, I've got a whole lot more in my mind today I want to talk about, but I don't because we have some serious problems to address amongst ourselves, not my listeners here in general, particular to the miners. But I tell you, the microcosm of the miner the dysfunction of the miner, the ignorance of the miner, the improper action of the miner, the gullibility of the miner, is the is the people of the world essentially, and it's in particular with a particular special law in the world in the United States of America, particularly to um, Americans, if I can use that generic term. So we 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 really have a. I'm encouraged because I, I find a foundation to work from. I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not as dupable as I used to be. And the only answers I can continue to come up with, and I know it sounds, people say it's too complicated, is that there is a law out there for a reason. And if you don't embrace that, you have nothing. Literally zero 
to respond to or impose upon someone that claims to have an authorita that they then have to prove if you know how to do it, and it's not that hard, that they have to actually produce the authority. And this chain of title we've talked about a few, mo- few weeks back here these, in the patents, the chain of title of authority or possession of an office or possession of, a, of the power is the thing you're always checking for. You don't, you don't prove it. You force the one having the duty to prove it. Now, I've just paused there because I want you to think about that. You don't prove that. You are already knowing what the list of, author- of, of qualifiers are. You force, by not force, but by demand, the production of the authority anyone is acting under. And you qualify that chain of authority in them to their uh, lawful constitutional power is what people don't do. They would rather come up and declare all they know that ain't so and think that's going to do it in front of someone who knows that it ain't so and then you get run over. Thump, thump. I'm pausing because I want really, I wish, I hope people are contemplating what I'm saying. We pick on way too much on us when the duty is on the party making the claim for authority. We then that translates over to making idols out of people, if I can say it this way. And I'm not, you know, I always say this stuff, and then my mind just flashes of all the people that are going to be all, all, what do I say, insulted because I'm putting everybody in the same class, and I'm not. I'm doing it as way of example for us to use, uh, to to use as an identifier, identifier to move along. That when I question these things. I may not say be saying anybody, anything about any one particular. A lot of people have a soft spot, an open wound that gets all scuffed up when I talk a little bit, I suppose. I guess in some regard, I am talking to some of you directly, but not really in my mind. It's more of a conceptual thing. And you, t- and you, s- you sense that, but you l- lash out, and then that makes a bad example for everyone else, because you're missing the point. I just know, I know that. And I, I wish this is a different type of forum where I it really was a, a place where it was like more like a like a like a classroom where there might be an interaction that we could do real time to to quell some of the misinformation it, it, the, the static in our own minds uh, but these uh, bringing people to idolship or to uh, even anticipating that they might be or embracing some of these things is not something that we necessarily have to run away but we really have to check what we're being handed in the form of uh, exposure disclosures awarenesses and one I've been critical of is is um, being put it on a pedestal was this Snowden guy and it, part of me says he's okay but there's another part that says it's a, there's a there's a play going on and wanted to touch base again going back and part of this is why and how you analyze some of these things how much value do you put in these people or those that that or those that would support him or the ripple effect or the sources they come from. I mean, you keep it's like a continuing depth analysis in depth as well as dimension. And it's not that hard. I mean, once you once you start getting the proper form, and you don't have a lot of questions to keep asking about qualifiers, then a lot of that goes away. And now you're just identifying quickly, qualifying quickly underneath the rules that are set in stone in your in your foundation that you've built for yourself. You can qualify certain things. That Snowden came on and said. Uh, on a story, it says an attorney in da- at Dallas, at Dulles, excuse me, attorney in Dulles, with a federal court order entitling them to see detainees, told by CBP, quote, it's not going to happen, attorney seeking contempt order. Snowden's response to that was, and is, I guess, he hasn't changed it, and he hasn't responded to me. This is on a Twitter. I'll send you the link in the broadcaster. No matter what, no matter your politics, this is grave concern. A government which refuses to respect the orders of its own courts is called a regime. A government which refuses to respect the orders of its own courts is called a regime. All right, so that's fair enough. That's a true statement. But what's the problem with him coming up, looked on as somebody with some authority and knowledge, was standing up for certain rights and certain protections and wanting disclosure for the people. He's essentially lying about the availability of the courts. 
we have been a regime that he is just now starting to see. This guy is supposed to be all up in the front of it, folks, all knowing about how this is all working. From the inside, he knows how we've been taking down and why that was supposed to be a violation, what he presented for us. I have no problem with all that part. It's this ongoing question for me that is the problem with me for him, in him. There is no courts, folks. This is not my opinion. I keep telling you about how we proved that. We proved it. The truth is, when you lose your established government, the framework that made it constitutional, you are in just a third world regime. You're just in any other plunderer. The cockistocracy, it doesn't even have a framework now to exist. But where did we know that? This, this Snowden's coming out here January 29th. When did we know that? At least for fact, no doubt. If we didn't have our inklings before, we could go on all the at least opinions because, you know, 9-11 is still a question, isn't it? We got our inklings. Uh, Patri P-A-T-I-R-O-T Act, not the Patriot Act, but the P-A-T-I-R-O-T Act came out like within hours. Well, that wasn't a clue. Made you all enemy combatants. That's when I, no, I'm not going to, I don't like describing things. So, all right, so Patriot Act. That brings us to where, folks? The, the NDAA finally perfects all this. And then what did the murder memo? And I had to go back in my files. I couldn't find this. But I about called the, that, that broadcaster the murder memo. Snowden is coming out to tell you that you're in a regime by acknowledging that there's somehow justice in the courts that don't exist. Is a fraudulent setup. And we know that from when? 2010, remember? The perfection of what they intended to do in 9-11 through the Patriot Act came through the NDAA, National Defense Authorization Act, where you were in now to enjoy indefinite detention without due process of law, right on its face, was the destruction of your judiciary if it did exist in competence. Again, it doesn't. Not the judges, nor where they reside or preside, or reside, they, they're the residents, in the comp court established underneath the Constitution. We've proven all that to be non-existent. The two courts that should be existent, you can't get into. If I've told you this before, go read carefully. It takes you a little while to read, and you really have to take notes in your mind. Uh, title, let's see, United States Code, Title 28, Chapter 28, Sections 88 to 131. There's only two competent courts, and you can't get to those. Out of all those chapters, of all the territorial courts, there's only two that are Article Three. No Article Three judge sits in any Article Three court. When Snowden tells you you're in a regime because there's no access to courts, he's lying to you to tell you to believe you believe there is a court that, that we could be doing with going into, which means we haven't actually existed in a republic for, for republican form representative government and lived underneath this caucusocracy for way long ago that I keep telling you about. But it was for sure ended in 2010, the NDAA murder mem memo. And those of you that have been with me for all these time on RLM, and then maybe before an Oracle, so 200 shows for me is pretty cool. And thank you again, Vince, for making it. I would have been blown right past that. I guess it's some kind of a, a time. It's not as much as other people. That's not, that's not the point. And I've done hundreds of shows otherwise in other networks for sure. But here we are, integrated with RLM, nice place to be, a nice group of folks, nice place to, to happen. I wish we had more, but it's, it's all integrated here that I enjoy that part. I'm a, I'm a creature to comfort as well. I don't like bouncing around different networks or dealing with the politics of different networks or the people that come in to subvert you when you're on different networks or the people that are, you don't even know that come from outside the people that are on the networks that come to subvert you. That's partly why I chose this network. So I've been broadcasting all these things for a long time. The 2010 NDAA murder memo explained it in no uncertain terms that you live in where, folks? You live in a, where the government, the most powerful bully, the most powerful thug in the world told you something. What was it? What was the one word that they said? They said where they were going. They were go and, they, you, and the example was when they made, uh, that they said, 
that you would be considered an enemy combatant and subject to indefinite detention at the whim of a bureau rat. What is that, folks, but the term extrajudicial? If you've gone extrajudicial, you've acknowledged you've destroyed the court function. There, right there is where I, folks, remember, I went to crickets. No one responded to that. I can only yell so much. And so I, you know, I mean, I get close to bursting a bubble, uh, bursting a, a vein. I'm going to have to chew, chill back a little bit. Part of me wants to scream all the time, folks. I just tell you, if you haven't got that, there is a part of me that wants to scream all the time. I want to be just yelling. But I know that's not going to do me any good. It's not going to probably do any of y'all any good. Maybe some of you would react to that better. I don't know, but I, I can't do it that way. Like, I can't be a, a comedian, even though there's a part of me that's also laughing all the time. It's really uh, kind of an interesting... Uh, well, if I had to look at what my psyche is, it'd be, be look pretty insane, actually, which is cool, because I see things, I see dead things, folks. I see dead things for the dead things they are, and I don't create the, the, the myths that they're alive, like every, most all you all do without being judgmental or, you know, pointing my, my finger at you. I just, this is what's going on. That the Snowden finally comes in 2017, seven years after we knew the fact for sure, to say you live under a regime, but then he makes the mistake by saying, by implying that the courts are available. My response to him, which is now uh, many days, well, since the 29th, what is we, half a week now, un unresol unresponded to, uh, I responded to him again, and got 140 characters to, to articulate a monstrous concept. I think I'm starting to learn pretty well to do some of that. But uh, I respond to Snowden. N new regime went extrajudicial in 2010 NDAA murder memo. Thanks for just now noticing, Snowden. If you can almost feel a contempt there, but also I'm shaking my head and laughing at the same time about what we are being faced with with these people, their position, what they say, how they fulfill the truth and deny it in the same way. It's like not telling the whole truth. Or maybe even worse, being an idol or being a, a, a pillar, if you will, of our perception. Focused on one little thing that was done and he's completely oblivious. And that is a terrifying thing for me, because if we're thinking that there's some authority there, wow. And this is why I keep telling you, you have to develop the foundation. Now, you may not agree with what I just said. You may not agree with my analysis. I'd like to hear what you have to say. I mean, tell it to me in summary form. I don't have all day to read certain stuff. But you may not believe and agree with what I'm telling you. But see, I come, if we were to get in a discussion, I would present my foundation first. And then I'd have you present yours, and I'd listen to see whether or not you've made a mistake, or whether or not we have two valid positions that need to be balanced. But I will suggest to you, in all my years doing all this, there is, I don't know of anybody that has a better foundation than the one I built for myself, for what I do and how I think. That provides me with a much better observation to be able to cut, see the transparent or cut through the obstruction, tear right through the curtains that they keep wanting to throw up. And this is one of those conversations that's a transparency and a curtain, where you put him at any level of authority or knowledge. I would have thought that this, this guy in the intelligence would have already understood, and maybe why he brought out that stuff was that he already understood that America was lost a long time ago, and the people didn't notice. And if they did notice, they didn't know how to re return it. They didn't know how to um, do become the mass that stops the problem. That we see, see that Tom, uh, uh, Thomas Jefferson tells us has to be a mass of, of, of educated people. People who know, have an intellect in it as well. So here I've spent like all this time just jumping on Snowden. I don't want to jump on him. I want you to see, for me, at least through my eyes, how quickly we can see how far away from actual knowledge and foundation we are when we take on uh, the, the advice of these people. He's telling you the truth. You live in a regime, and that may be nice, what you live in. Right? We just call it, I, I mean, I'm nice just calling it the caucusocracy. 
but he's telling he's he's allowing some information to be put in people's minds that's a lie it's the, it's just not the truth if i just leave it there and i'm fascinated really about these people i'm fascinated that these people actually get the following that they do another someone else steps up of the same week and tells us the obvious again and they did it a little differently, but they still tell us, if anybody's kind of questioned this, the, the justice system is criminal. Paul Craig Roberts. What did I say, folks? It's the just us system. We've heard that before. I'm not the originator of that thing. I said, why? Just because. That's why. They, get, they just do it just because. No just cause, just because we let them. So finally, how long have I been telling you this? And I'm not... Just trying to point out, folks, that there's we've had this knowledge for a long time. There's no excuse to still be stating the obvious and then stating it incorrectly to give us more things to ponder when we actually have to put boots to the ground somewhere doing something proper. Paul Craig Roberts, he's made his name. He's made his name here last few years. Uh, I, I question all these people at some level, but. When they, t when they tell you something that's the truth, like the regime, it's known as correct, I'm going to agree, have to agree with that part. That's the correct part. That there's a court you can go to to stop it? Ah, not so much. Paul Craig Roger starts out about our Americans racists. I don't even want to touch all that. But he makes some important points to show how the system that's established at this point is criminal and not justice. And we, in America, have allowed this obvious criminality to take us over as if it is justice, and we are crickets to the criminality, and we agree to it. We are accessories to the crime against us. Again, I, I start looking up, and I want to read this stuff, and I say, why? I'm going to have it on the blogcaster, folks. Some of you probably already read this. I see this article got passed quite a bit around. I see nobody commenting to it, except that it's a cool article. Like some others are cool articles. But they don't do for me is they don't provide, okay, now what? We know this. Okay, Snowden, thanks for noticing. It's been seven years. Where were you seven years ago? Why wasn't that your reason for being, instead of just saying, I'm helping y'all? No, we have, a, we have a, an, an insurrection. We have an overthrow have gone on. We're an occupied people. The people in intelligence are the criminals, for as nice as they might seem to be. They're protecting the criminal against you. And you didn't understand, maybe you didn't pick up the key. I said you and the Patriot Act were considered an enemy combatant. Why? When they deem an allegation of misdemeanor, forget the heinous terrorism that you could be, just a misdemeanor. They turned that in the NDAA to you being an enemy combatant. Just cause, folks. You missed everything if you didn't pick those things up. Of how what is being protected, and how that works against you. And I still hear crickets, and I still play crickets. I don't do it because I like to hear them. It actually bothers me, but I don't know what else to do at this point. And I don't have that creative mind right now with everything else on me. I'd like to be a little more creative. Maybe you have a suggestion that works better than crickets. But to me, it, it's, that is the opening, that's the intro to our existence, week in and week out until we start doing better, uh, much better. In fact, let me just, just give you a quick little insight without fulfilling much in there either. You see Trump doing some certain things in trying to reduce the regulation, uh, which follows very carefully. It's very astonishing to watch this happen. Relative to our default judgment and what it means, you're watching some of the executive orders coming out to actually Fulfill some, no, I'm asking you. I noticed he was falling short. There's hardly anybody, unless they listen to me, that would look at this and with the mind I am analyzing with, uh, the, the land disposal side, to see how. Some of you may have. I don't, wanna, I don't want to diminish anybody who knows this. I just don't think that there's many that actually do. And this is how they get us. We don't know what we don't know that would fulfill what is to be done. And to know then, there's another way at that, to know that other people, like Paul Craig Roberts, can give you a list of the ways it's failing 
will give you an insight into where you begin to resolve this into the proper way. Uh, the prop, more proper way, I have to say. I don't know about proper anymore. It's very difficult to know what proper is. When you start learning, you don't know a lot of stuff. And there's people out there, you see the protocols of the older desire and say, you don't know much. And we're going we're gonna to exploit that in you. That should bother you a bit. If it bothers me, where am I not getting it? This is what makes my mind maybe so keen to certain things and maybe not others. Why I don't tolerate certain things. Not that I'm not intolerant. It's just that the, if you're going to solve a, if you're here to, to solve a problem, let's not talk about inane type things or go down paths that have no actual, uh, you know, that are actually dead ended. Or at least, I, as I tell you, I can tell you that they're dead ended. And I guess you can go do your own experience, but you, and that's fine. I, you know, if you need to do that, that's what you need to do. But how about if we just take wise counsel? How about if we do that for ourselves? So getting over to Paul Craig Roberts, I go off. I don't want to read. I could have read it, I guess, and made the point as well that way. He goes through and lists all these things. Let me do, I will read one little thing I just saw. To be clear, he says, the primary reason for wrongful convictions is that the success indicator for police, prosecutor, and judge is conviction, not justice. Crimes are solved by wrongful convictions. That, that was a very insightful statement. Crimes are solved by wrongful com convictions. High conviction rates boost the careers of prosecutors and high profile convictions boost their political careers. The key to rapid and numerous convictions is the plea bargain and plea bargain suit judges as they keep the court docket clear. To today, 97% of felony cases are settled with a plea bargain. This means police, evidence, and prosecutors Prosecutors' cases are tested only three times out of 100. When the evidence and the case are tested in court, the tests confronts a vast array of prosecutorial misconduct, so such as such as suborned perjury and without hold, withholding of exculpatory evidence. In America, everything is loaded against ju justice. That's a powerful observation. He gives you a list of where the, what the effect of, we are then thinking we're seeing, oh, that's the problem. That's not the problem. That's the effect of the problem. Remember, you, just in a quick discussion on that point, the Bar Association runs this place, folks. It's good for business. It's a criminal organization from the get-go. It's organized crime at the highest level. The, the mafia drools at this power, folks. Now, is that my opinion? Oh, I go against all attorneys? Well, not. there's only a few that I won't. There's some people that keep, get people out of jail after wrongfully conviction, uh, and they get them out of jail after 35 years. Those guys, I, I think, are true, true advocates for people. The rest of the system and the, those are the allowance are uh, it's a criminal organization. Why am I saying that? And why do I do that 100% to all of them until they prove different? Our judgment, folks. They agreed to that. They admit, agree they commit felonies. They have destroyed the Republican form of representative government. And they're going to continue. And they're going to use methods to deceive you to do so. And on and on. There's no, uh, no desire to, to back off once they're told. That's in our judgment. That's in their agreement to what the complaint said. This is not just an opinion. I hate attorneys. There is an organized criminal syndicate that runs your life. Why wouldn't business be good when they're in control of it? This is so far and beyond what he talks about in this, about racism in America. He never actually gets to that point. He just talks about the effects. No different than Snowden retar returned the response to an effect of a condition. Either oblivious or completely lying about disclosing, disclosing the fact that that can never be fixed and that it has been a regime, even when he was inside. I want our analyses to be much better for us. That To do that proper analyses allows us to not become the victim of our own resistance. Or at least so much so. Again, there's no, no silver bullets here. We see one style, uh, just one characterization of a condition changes from one regime to the next. 
That is the battlefield we're in. What you're going to do about it? We certainly can't go down and the little mouse against the eagle, even if we have a 45. There's another eagle out there somewhere. We're going to have to be a lot more intelligent how we approach this. It's a much more subtle battle that, that goes on. It really, I mean, I just thought what passed in my mind was our, our, what we're told about principalities and powers and who's in control of that side and who owns this earth on that level. And you're not getting around that. You are not more intelligent than that capacity. So we have to come in with our highest intention, our most persistent intention, and our most in intel intelligent action. It, we're, it still may not be enough. But the more of us doing that right action, there's more people to see. It's like more opinions. that are not opinions. They're actually looking. It's like, you know, we, um, I, I'm not being in the military, so the squad, I think, uh, you know, a four or five man squad, they each have a particular job. They each have a particular talent. They go in a group. They can see, th one man may not see it all, but all men will see it all, most of it. Most of it enough to be survivable. And so, yeah, I think I have a problem I just saw come up. And this will be on the, this will be on the, um, this will be on, on the tape. So excuse me, I'm going to move on, just keep going. Uh, thank you, Grimmer. A little quick little blip come up underneath. I got one little line I get to see and happen to look over there right in time. You had a problem on the audio. I hope it's going through now. I don't know why, um, I don't know what happened. Uh, and so, uh, appreciate that. Thank you. Sorry for the break. Uh, now, going back to, so one condition and characterization is just transformed for another when you live in this regime without law. Now, this guy, Trump, is in the office, and I told you we're going to be looking at a very narrow scope to try and get in and get done what is sufficient. And what we're, what we're doing is so fundamental in the literal, the literal, folk. we're not just talking some idea and some statement in the Constitution, the literal law of the land. is to bring permanent more um, not beyond it's beyond permanence to bring it that is so on note on notice for anything in the future to anyone in the future to come in order to allow allow anyone to see if they change that that it it's a crime to change that actually not like what happens now where they just stand under some basic just general authority statement that we will present more more aptly what needed to be do, uh, done. Not what they're doing to us or for us. We look and analyze it for what, what's the fulfillment of what needs to be done. This characterization moves from regime to regime. And I'm hoping a lot more for Trump, actually. He, he speaks in certain ways that there's an integ is it, there's an in, um, he's a, he can be, he has integrity. But you're, you're in a, he talked about the swamp. Now, I don't know why he's throwing a bunch of turds in the swamp to clear the swamp. I don't know why he's done that. But there's something in the world, in the, uh, and there's something in, the, uh, in war about you know, doing the unexpected and the surprise and keeping your enemies closer to you than not and all that stuff. And I'm not, I under, I've heard it. Uh, I'm not in that position to think about it. But this guy could be you know, a super, super genius that way. I can see it. Whether or not it's happening is a whole other thing. The characterization of these, deal, of these things now are moved in one description to the next. Now we bring on the idea of Kool-Aid. We were told before those that drunk the Kool-Aid were a problem. Now, because of the swamp, it's now characterized in an article I have for you to read. And, I, and they refer to Paul Craig Roberts as well in this article. It's called Pass the Gatorade. And uh, there's two, our, uh, two authors here that, that were have an article they are presenting today that they've had for quite a long time in analyzing what what's going on in the country or not going on or what the what the powers of the president are that shouldn't be going on and i think it was important to see this someone else doing that research see i can i in my basic knowledge i assumed but what i read was accurate enough that i could continue reading it for the truth that it is And it uh, looks like I'm, just uh, pause for a second. I can't wait too long. I'm going to let the encoder go uh, for, the, for the 
archive. We are having apparently a problem staying connected on one of my encoder lines. Uh, so I'll just make that out there and hope it gets there on the on the uh, to Grimner just to let you know uh, I'm keeping it uh, as hooked up as I can. But for some reason I'm having a problem now with that line. It's the um, I think it's the new IP. So uh, that'll be a tech thing a little, a little later. Uh, they go on and through in this this, uh, this article to talk about what the powers of the president are. Now this to me was evidence for simple short narrow uh, discussion to keep our our mind focus on what the short list is that shows that this government the caucusocracy is having their way with us uh, there wasn't an authority to go extrajudicial that was the destruction of your nation this is way beyond regime actually i'll go with that word but this is way beyond regime for a for a, a nation that calls for regime change as if it's a, as if it's legitimate when we went extrajudicial in 2010 haven't had actual justice in courts of remedy for years before that is an astonishment to me that we still have crickets that when they all turned on when this caucusocracy this organized criminal syndicate turned on you and you remained silent that means that we are, are not an educated people and we don't and we are not even educated in our remedies given we still have them as the people themselves not through the organization we did this for ourselves. And I'll say one more time while I can see the encoder not been broken. I'm having trouble with the new IP's encoder staying hooked on. The other two encoders I'm running are fine. Just to put that, it won't matter on PassCast. That should be fine when I put that up. So, so I want to point out this article just changes the character of the Kool-Aid that we're drinking before to Gatorade relative to the swamp. And that we still have a lot of work to do to check out. We have to be knowledgeable. They point out this, uh, they have a problem with, with the standard going on. I wanted to point this out quickly at the very, their conclusion. Their conclusion actually is a paragraph I think before. Uh, but uh, their conclusion uh, makes this uh, the statement, there is no science behind it. Now, this must be political science. But there's no science anymore. The science is leg it's, it's, it's um, lobby scientists to continue lobbying for the organized criminal syndicate. It, it's to promote the criminal syndicate. In fact, if you look at the power of the president, once the president is powerful, is in the office, he is the head promoter of the party that he represents. He doesn't represent you. So the, part of this, this conclusion says, while we aren't sure where the concept of drinking the Kool-Aid came from into the discussion of political dogma, it, sh it surely is a result insult to Kool-Aid to attach it to such a sordid state of affairs. We think a new beverage is warranted, given that one with, this, uh, with one of the big slogans for the presidential idiocy show was drain the swamp, we nominate Gatorade because after all, gators live in the swamp too. Tongue in cheek, why not? We have to identify things here for us. We're gonna have to get a knowledge base in us if we expect to stop these. Well, uh, it's just an ongoing caucusocracy. I just don't know what, what else, the, it's, the, it's the worst, it's the excrement that rises to the top of a system and then controls it. And then we all complain that it's not going right and government's no bad. Well, the government's an inert framework. It has a different rule going on and no one seems to want to follow that. And so I'm asking us to look at that instead of trying to invent a new reality or invent a reality so that we don't have to do something about it. This is what I see most people doing. They define something the way they want to see it, and they think that's the bee's knees of how it's all supposed to go. Don't even try it, but that's okay. Don't, don't look at the history that says most of what they're saying wouldn't work. It's all been tried before kind of thing. It, there's nothing new under the sun. And in some regard, what we have today really is a good thing. It, it, it wasn't protected against the caucusocracy, but maybe that's the part, only part we have to work on. But we have to work on that part. We have to understand it. As we're asking at the dis district, the Jefferson Mining District, not more legislation. Why do you make a new law? The old laws are not being followed. Why do you make a new law to follow that's supposed to correct the old laws not being followed? We don't want that. We want a remedy. We want accountability within the constraints that exist because they're there. As I tell you, just read 
malfeasance and delinquency are, are part of the criminal acts that an official does. Why don't I hear more complaints about that? Even if they go nowhere, you're making the record. If you do them right and don't hear the, the nonsense I see people writing on and on and on and on, just stay to the darn point that's the problem. Just stay focused on one issue at a time. You at least build the record that everybody understands it's not convoluted by a bunch of theories. I, I don't worry the fact that I have to go to the statute to find that the, an official that took an oath to uphold that statute, they're in malfeasance or, or, or delinquency or, or just as worse, or maybe worse, felony conduct, theft by extortion, or theft or felony coercion? What do I care where they are as long as they're subject to it and I can build that chain of authority and duty to them? I'm not even saying it's to me. I'm saying I'm being harmed by them doing that they don't follow it. So there's a way at this that I hear nobody doing. Nobody. Not even close. I do hear a lot of questions, which are cool. I don't have a problem with the questions. And I can tell you, I have to thank you very much the last few weeks of, uh, of emails. More on point. More, I'm just thrilled for you all. More on point. You're, you're, been do, you're doing the research. You're, you're coming up with your ideas. Your, 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 your questions are really, uh, really solid as far as on the thing and the issue and allows me to get right with you about where the, maybe the mis misapprehension was. I appreciate that in you all. It, I only know that you're going down the more correct path for your what you found to be the wrong you needed to make right or to make it uh, make your distinction in the uh, in the world so that you know that the powers that be have no place at you and you can prove it by making them prove it. Why? Because you already have the prevailing evidence, and that's what the courts are all about. So these are, we have deceptions that come as truths, that come as idols and characterizations, and we we don't really paid much attention to. We take people's words for things. We, uh, we oh, we'll, we'll talk against the, the, the caucus diocracy and we'll wave our fist at it, but it's not really doing anything. We can identify it and then not do anything. It's still not doing anything. Uh, then we have another style of deception, and I'm, I'm starting to, I didn't really have a theme more that, like where I'm going now, but I'm starting to realize there's this theme going on. These deceptions are used uh, to to keep us in question or or, or surprised or uh, looking in the wrong direction or disoriented or whatever a new a little story came out last night uh, no, notice to us whether you want to call it fake news or not it's, it's notice to me if at least exposed how world leaders were duped into investing billions over manipulated global warming data they spell duped with U. I spell it with, for us with a double O. So but there's a distinction here I'll make. Well, how world leaders were duped into investing billions over manipulated global warming data is fake news. It is uh, the Daily Mail doing the cat box cover-up. The world leaders were not duped. Anybody who's been researched this ever knows it's been a plan. They've been caught, folks. This might even be fake news. I don't even know. But this is the truth, that they are doing the cat box cover-up, but they weren't duped. This was the plan. The point is, it's being exposed and now being made available for everyone who didn't understand this crime against people. This hits. Look at this. is coming right after... One man got in one place. You think the people make a decision? One man got in one place and he said climate change is a fraud. He took all the regulations and beating down the regulations that would ever promote it. And all of a sudden now someone steps up to say, yeah, all that data was kind of wrong. But they ta attach this idea of world leaders being duped. That is a lie. This was a plan. How would I know that without opinion? We sued it, folks. We sued to stop it. Again, I'm not talking from opinion. I am not actually, and I'm not talking from an exalted place. I'm saying that there are steps you can take to properly get the record and evidence you need to continue to beat these people down. For That's a small group of people that are lying to everyone, whether anybody else sees it. In other words, I come here like every week to talk. I hope people understand me. If you don't, I don't. I'm looking for a way to allow you to understand me. But if I don't, it doesn't change the truth and the reality that I see that you all may not see at all. 
again, we have our own strengths. I can't deny mine because someone else is not in that direction or refuses to use it, use what they have. I don't know about that part. But expose how world leaders were duped is a lie. They're trying to cover the world leaders like, oh, we didn't know. We were only working by the information we had. It was a plan, folks. They've known this. Do you realize the, if this thing gains traction, what it does to the European Union, what it does to the UN? The wheels are actually starting to come off with this one guy making a couple of disclosures and having the power. Having the power. What did I say? The power. The power was to have the right. The the, 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 the what everyone recognizes as actual authority and cause and effect. And I look up Java Doctor in RLM, one little line I see, did I see the UN lady admit the whole thing to destroy capitalism? Please, folks, remember, I reported on that, well, I think it was two years ago. What was it, um, Christine Lagarde? I can't remember, one of those or the European people. She stated they're transforming the economy into a place it's never been. Transform is one of the code words. Go back. It's on the internet, folks. It's on my blogcaster. Just go back. And, I don't even know. Maybe uh, we may be losing some of the um, SEO power because I noticed that some of my articles and stuff don't come up when I, I even when I research for them, when I even think I know what I'm looking for. But but it's back there. And if not back there, it's on the internet. This is not a secret. This was them, folks. These are these these officials being so-called duped. No, they're looking. They're they're looking for cover right now. It's over. This thing is over. If we could just organize up around it, it's, it's that part's done. Just, just so I, I let you know for, in clarity, we sued the underlying cause for climate change. Stopping climate change, is it, this is where I say they fell short. They're not stopping the thing that continues it. No, we get to go in and say, no, no, you fell short. We need you to do this now. I'm asking you to think, are you in the position to be able to see that and do that in some place that you see wrong? If you're not, I'm asking you to know, roll up your sleeves a little bit tighter and start making that point so for you. Whatever the wrong is, fix it. It's there. One guy in the seat. It wasn't all of y'all. One guy makes this decision. This is how frivolous this whole thing ends up coming down. And really, it focuses on who the, who the power is. We were suffering underneath this and I don't know that it's not going to, it may end, folks. And if he does it the way he's doing it, it's going to end. And the next, the next regime that comes in is going to just erase, erase the chalkboard like he's erased the chalkboard. He's now set a whole new dynamic. Folks, if you don't understand what's going on here as to creating uh, an internal systemic chaos now from regime to regime, uh, you miss that too. But uh, climate change, all this nonsense that came through the UN, the, the Club of Rome plan, the CFR, folks, go right to come right out of their voice. It's right out of their mouth, their, 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 dead, their dead entity mouth. The, the dust, the dust and, and, and moths that came out of their mummies talked all about this stuff that they claim that they're, they're duped. They're not. And we need to see that. We need to look through it. Not because it's our opinion and not because now that we know it, it's okay, we can disregard it. No, that means we have power. There's evidence here that they are a plan and they're destroying us and their media is there to cover for them if we didn't realize it again. Here's another evidence of it. It's not necessarily just fake news. It's, de it's deception. It's non-disclosure. It's the cat box cover up. In other words, well, I won't what do you cover up in a cat box, folks, is what I'm actually talking about. These people are. I do try to be sensitive to my, uh, my young listeners. It's, don't, don't, you know, there's something about a higher intellect and a higher language set and a higher conceptualization, and we shouldn't have to be in the gutter like that. But this is what we're dealing with, and it's up to us to clean out that cat box so that there's nothing to cover up. How's that? Biologist. Here's the um, conservation, not here. This article is apparently the truth about science. What she is responding to, to is the conservation biologist science, the, the uh, conservation sciences, the lobby sciences that they rely on for science-based proofs that these prior world leaders were duped by. A biologist comes out to, uh, to explain the defense of the flawed polar bear predictions is an embarrassment to science. 
is an article I got, all in, again, all in the same week, folks. It just all comes together. Polar Bear Science is what the website the blog is called. Excuse me, no, it's a domain. A few days ago in a radio interview, a senior U.S. fish and wildlife biologist repeated the tall tale that southern Beaufort uh, sea polar bear numbers declined in recent years due to loss of sea ice, but restating this egregious misinformation does not make it true. I'll stop there. Another, this is a scientist speaking against the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. If anybody has ever been doing research, the Fish and Wildlife is a part of the problem. It's a conservation group, organization of the United States. It's committing treason. It utilizes bio, this conservation scientist as best sciences. It's a lie. It's a fraud. It's based on aesthetics and no actual science. These are the dupers. This agency of the federal government completely violative of its underlying, the government's, con, the government's underlying fiduciary duty to y'all, but notwithstanding, we at least see a scientist coming out, and I put another tweeter, I said, indeed, conservation sciences is not science, thank you very much. Didn't get a response to that either, so maybe she considered herself a, a, a conservation scientist, I don't know, she just had zoologist on her uh, Twitter uh, exam, um, description, I thought that was fair enough. Didn't say conservation zoologist, isn't it? And she is identifying the misinfo egregious misinformation. She goes on to explain it. I think it's important to read. Get yourself, um, get the black and white in your eyes of what she's saying. It. I assume it, it looks like it's right to me. It made sense to me. It looks like the science I understood when I was doing some studies about this to try and get a handle on what's going on. But remember, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife is also in integrated with the... Um, IUCN.org, uh, uh, internet uh, horde of international water trespassers and trespassers. That's also tied into the United States Commerce Department. Remember Lubchenko? I used to talk about her. She was the chairman of that organization. These people are cri organized criminals. They use this. Uh, they use these so-called science uh, conservation scientists, and then now they're duped by them. If, what else do we need? What more evidence can you compile here? Point one, point two, point three, you have the evidence now for all of these things that might come down that you may have been ex interested in to stop the nonsense. You want to stop your transportation carbon tax that's coming to your motor fuel? How about that little box they're putting in to check out how many miles you go? Together with your road law that I tell you about, you have right to, and then the fraud that they're bringing on because of this, the carbon tax uh, brings on that uh, mileage tax and that little box and your registration to it and your connection and your leash and your servitude and your slavery to the system and your uh, digital currency you'll have to have to pay it. And all the regulation, this evidence stops that. Not the box. The reasons why the uh, alternative, uh, alternative dispute resolution process that feloniously interrupted your life and interfered and obstructed your free life was being used to uh, engage those programs. Now, I hope right there you understood we can't be looking at the cause, the effect, or the, op or the, the outcome. We're looking at trying to find the cause always. Where is the original first misstep? That's, that's really, folks, maybe, and that's how, maybe that's what people think I'm, I talk with people, they talk with me, you know, you know, you think, you know, you, you sound, you kind of come off a little arrogant. Well, I'm, as soon as I hear the first misstep that I know for fact, by experience, is the wrong step, I don't want the, the one that I'm, that's talking to go any further. I want them to know the better way. Why would I let them indulge their misinformation? So I, I don't have a filter for that, and maybe that's one of my, you know, I'm not that diplomatic. But this is where I see the problem. We, we always go to the, not to the first step. We think, we, again, we, there's, a, there's some kind of an authority that we have to figure out. Oh, when they say so, it's good enough. Well, no, there's another. You have to qualify. That is qualified against an objective basis. That's in the law that they've agreed to. And that has to be constitutional. So that's another step you do. Yes, there's a lot of bit of time going on here. But after you get all this, and all of a sudden you just look at somebody. And you say, well, heck, I just did some basic research, found out three of those things are no good. I know they can't even qualify it, so it's not even a question. I'm going to push it on them. What do you, on our court case with a default judgment after quo warranto, quo warranto says you, you have the burden to produce the warrant in law you have to be in the seat of the judge. I already knew he couldn't produce a court. I already knew a senior judge cannot qualify as an Article Three judge. I already knew he couldn't take the case underneath the court, the territorial court. He was taking it even if he had that court. I didn't walk into that remedy without a knowledge about it. 
Oh, oops, I just gave you the nugget of how you challenge that. It's called the quo warranto. How many times have I repeated all that? So the, the, that can be done everywhere. What you, you're a conservation scientist. How is that qualified as an actual scientist? And then you bring out a couple other proofs and say, well, we got this and this. No, I'm rebutting the presumption of your, lawful, of your, of your authority. You're, you're a principally authorita. And here's, here's the, my probable cause. I already read those probable cause. We talked about stakeholders and stockholders. And we talked about what a conservation biologist is, right? There's two pieces of evidence. I'm not just talking just cause. I got just cause. And you, I think, are creating a felonious deception. Now, I'm going to put on you your warrant in law, in facts, in your experience that says that you have the right to speak in the, in the venue that you purport to be able to speak. Okay, so I'm, again, trying to lay out some certain things. That's, how you, that's certainly how I go through it. That's what you should be doing. That's what we do. There's just a certain order that you lay stuff out. And all this stuff is evidence. As I tell you, it's nudis. notice to you. Notice. Notice opportunity, time, and place. If you haven't tied that together, I'll say it now that it came to me. I haven't said it for a long time. Notice opportunity, time, and place. Once they give you a notice, you have opportunity not to respond. If you don't, you lose. This is voluntarism, folks. If you haven't quite figured this out, everyone wants to go, oh, I'm a voluntarist. You, exactly. You don't even know you're in it already. Oh, but they forced me. Well, that was part of the voluntarism. You haven't thrown off certain presumptions and you continue to respond as if they were applicable. You live in a voluntary society. You won't agree with me on that. You'll find, oh, but they force me. And that's not what voluntarism is. Well, you don't have that, de that, that definitional basis because you aren't in the power because you have voluntarily put yourself in a, a servitude despite your opinion. What I try to show you how to, how to start to make the record a, contrary to, you rebut that presumption as well. So scientists have to make records, and because Trump came in and he was talking against funding science, and I didn't really look at all too much of that. I mean, a lot of the a lot of the scientists I noticed for a while were all we're going to lose our jobs or whatever. He's going to truncate funding and all this, and I'm part of me is saying good because a lot of you guys are just criminals. But they have to keep they have to keep their data going. So what I found fascinating is in the same same week of the story, the world leaders uh, being duped, which they weren't by these conservation biologists, which are not scientists, they're lobbyists for the agenda and the cause to keep the organized criminals, whether it's domestic or foreign, functioning, transparent to y'all. It was this, also this story, this uh, report from, uh, what was it, the Intercept, the Intercept, I think it is, yeah, the Intercept, how scientists can protect their data from the Trump administration. Now, I thought that was an interesting uh, thing. They started talking about how they were going to take all this bad data and hide it from Trump. Which seems kind of frivolous at some level to begin with. I mean, it's always going to be bad data. But what, are they going to hide it in a box until it's some time to pull it back out? It's still going to be bad data. The point is now we know that there's bad data. We now have a story that says that the, the leaders were duped. We also know the truth about that. And now we have a, a, an article that says, hey, hey, scientists that were duping everybody, here, you need to know some information from The Intercept on how you keep your, your, uh, your data safe from the Trump administration. And they go through things like BitTorrent, Tor Onion Services, Onion Share, and then they explain some of it. And I thought this was actually more important for those of us that are being um, in the digitized, digital world, subject to the digital gods, uh, the people that hack that and the, the priests behind the scenes that make your life uh, so, oh, so, so uh, wonderful. That this was actually something we need to start figuring out is available to us in our digital world as we move ourselves in time to expose these criminals and then move into the next phase where we then understand what our remedies are for them. And then the next phase actually is like we're trying to, we're hitting that, that, that step right now to reestablish actual jo justice is available. So this is an ongoing battle. It always will be. We just got caught late. And so I'm, hopefully we're in a, in a we're in the proper place. We're doing the proper thing ahead of whatever is coming to provide a place, but there's no guarantee. And we may need the mass of people clamoring for the justice, knowing that there isn't any, to identify why it's not, to get these criminals out of their offices 
uh, get the system to start prosecuting. Now, I don't, it hasn't happened yet, but uh, this one judge who, who enjoined, where the first judge would not fully enjoin Trump's decision on immigration, the second judge in Seattle did. Trump sued as an appeal. There was a rumor he was going to go after, and he may be, I don't know, going after that judge for subverting the just judicial branch by subverting the, uh, the executive branch's function in law enforcement. That is a very interesting observation because until that day, we attempted in 2013 to, and we did inform them of the inherent power of the, of the branches of government, be they legitimate, not a corporate structure or not hiding as a, as a facade, be they actual tri-parrot government, each branch or department, you know it's a branch, they keep changing it because it's a, it's a corporation. I get confused. So forget that. Just find out which one it is right now. And then find out what it's supposed to be. That each branch has an inherent power to check the excesses of each other branch. Inherent power. It doesn't have to be named. Is a very powerful obfuscation at some level if you don't know it's there. That we demanded that the uh, what, whatever branch was going to do it, step in and check the excesses of the other branch before we sued. It was in our cease and desist letter demand. That that, that conversation about the, the executive going after a judge for undermining the power of the executive is the remedy that has been unspoken all this time that needs to be enforced in effect for us to begin to have a chance to get us back to what made America great again. If we can't, America cannot be made great again. And I'm talking about it in our original idea and under the original establishment because we are not in a government right now. You have to have a judiciary that works within the constraints of the law. The power is within the branches to check that. So when they aren't checking it, you know they're in on it. And so I'm, I'm just watching this thing unfold before us. This is what's required by, required by our injunction to exist that we've already have on the record that says, hey, government, you had the power to stop this, and where you're not, everyone who didn't is an accessory. And here is how law gets enforced. And all that takes, folks, is someone in the office that intends to enforce the law. One man, in this case, delegated, delegating or agreeing to another man but having the delegation power to do so in the DOJ properly functioning, not as you see today is all the difference in the world for us. Getting back to our data and saving it. This article speaks to all these people that are duping, uh, uh, the, duping the uh, leaders. Well, we got, remember the hook and the bait for y'all to bite on, the school, the school that you is. The leaders have the bait and the hook on it. Don't bite, folks. The Intercept says, okay, all you, all you duping scientists, all you conservation biologists, come save your data these ways. I'm saying, no, let's uh, forget that. We can probably use these as a guidance to help if we didn't have another list. So data protection becomes seri a very serious problem uh, right off the bat. We've got whatever their perception is that they're doing. That we come on to the idea that this data can be taken or corrupted or taken from you uh, without your consent, that you have to be ahead of the game in order to give itself a chance to protect it, that this little ditty comes up here. Not Bo Diddy, but this thing. Uh, 2K wins right to store your biometric facial data. So in one respect, we want to save data. and These guys, these can steal the data and keep it from you. 2K wins right to store your biometric facial data. Folks, the digital future is not going to be in your control where all these people have your biometrics. This, part, this story came up a little bit, started to uh, make the surface uh, for us with the fingerprints on pictures. If you do the peace sign with your fingerprints out, with given enough light, they're going to be able to uh, likely take your biometric fingerprints forever and be able to do whatever biometric access for those fingerprints would allow, no different than your face. Court rules that NBA 2K16's 
face scanning feature doesn't breach gamers privacy now what was important here is not well not, astonishing that they could take your data and keep it and give it to third parties but they explain how this is not just a NASA stealing it this is not just uh, some computer company who owns the computer having internal software that takes this stuff from you uh, th this is where you go to use something and when you say you agree to the terms of service of the use you agree to this and so for all you voluntarists who do this and wonder why and why and then, and then complain that there's getting there's too much power when they told you the internet was not private it's public everything on the internet is actually military and you didn't hear that uh, you don't quite get the clue that you can't really expect the privacy and they've been telling us that now in spades that a company can get your permission get your face features this is fascinating technology don't don't underestimate my fascination with what they can do now but their popular NBA series takes the dimensions of your face puts that onto a a 3D representation on a 2D graphic apparently in the game so you look like you're playing and the federal judge says when they do that you've lost it that's when you give it to them that's when you volunteer by volunteering to use the systems what about when they haven't and they become and this comes down to where your AI systems now have rights and they now have been tapped or it's already happening that they can be tapped as a witness that due to necessity, this unchecked, unbridled abuse of power, they can go ahead and get this information from you. No different, they can take the information from your phone. This was really an astonishing uh, uh, fact to see the evidence of. And it's not an opinion, it's not guessing anymore. And they give you in this report how it is you give up all this stuff. And I can't, when you extend it out, whether you know this or not, when you extend it out to everything you do is digitally acknowledged and consented to, you, well, you just point out, that's just about the problem with I have with Skype. They told you right there they're doing it on your voice and they're doing it on your chat. And then we found out that they manipulate that as well. They can make up just about anything they want, folks. And you allow that. It's something that we have to really consider uh, strongly. I think we do. As we move into the time when you become effective, you don't know, you're going to have vulnerabilities and you're going to have to limit those vulnerabilities. And it's almost going to be, have to work out also to be an unsaid thing you just do amongst each other so that there's no communication about it happening. And I said that because it just flashed in my mind, that's, you know, that's part of the process. Hacking your life, uh, understanding your life, your your features, your ha your biometric can be hacked, and it's conceived after the fact that it's okay for a company to do this. This is a co this is a commerce corporation making money, and they can give those features over to anybody else depending on how the the, the, the slick lawyer has made the words work. If you're not available in understanding that, you're not really understanding what I'm saying about the silent weapons and quiet wars, and you put yourself in you plug yourself into the place they give you the socket to plug into. actual hacking every reporter needs to understand Cheryl Atkinson's case against the United States government was something that John Rappaport wrote about and I read the article and this is an interesting story all around uh, and you do need to read this story you need to understand about what the government can do how it gets away with stuff what the standards again the the decision the, the government the courts are not there to protect you there's not even an expectation of it which is even like this should have been the first clue. They can collect up your stuff. They can tap into your life. We all know this, but this is not opinion anymore. This is not some sci-fi, folks. This is happening to us. Again, I want to read and I don't want to read. Um, there's just so much to go through. In fact, in fact so much so I don't... I, uh, Vince uh, put a listing of one of the past and broadcasts in the FN network, the uh, freedomsnetwork.com social page. A and the list that he had of the subject matter I talked about in one broadcast 
what was quite astonishing. I didn't, I didn't recognize that. But this is, I guess, the thing. I don't know what you all want to talk about. I'll talk about all of it. Can I get you all just to find something that intrigues you? To, that's a that's a problem that you, we can use to we can use this evidence, this notice, and the uh, notice uh, given us the opportunity, the time, and the place to respond to the, what the notice is telling us. Can we use that that due process they're handing us all the time, whether they call it fake news or whether it's the truth or this mixed stuff? Can we use it? All the subject matters I covered in one broadcast uh, almost tired me out, folks. So I guess your ear holes are, are really taking a beating. But the, pro- the problem is, is that's the, the scope of, the, uh, of, of what we're up against. I, I can go about everywhere because there's an underlying basis. In fact, I was talking to my, my colleague, the um, chairman of the district. He wanted to he wanted me to put the broadcast uh, link on our Je- on the Jefferson Mining District. I said, well, I don't want to really co-mingle those. And he says, well, what what's the basis from which you're speaking? Isn't it isn't it really this this law and how it works and and the authorities and challenging the authorities for their proper authority, not letting them not giving them an inch one way or the other? And I said, yeah, that's pretty much we I come from that in every aspect. He goes, and then then you're relevant. See, because when you get into objective basis and law, it has to be relevant across the board and when you stop seeing it being relevant across the board it's your first evidence there's a problem that you may not live in the place that you believe you live you're told you live or you think you could be living if you're not having it work your belief in something working or your desires to have something being that way is not doing anything literally and as i remember i was just looking vince made another comment he told me when i put that comment about how much there was he goes that was that's just the short list folks so i know i talk about a lot of things and maybe it's a lot and it's nice to hear i'm trying to hit spectrums of subject matters that are relevant to every anyone not everyone but anyone and i give a little tidbit of how it interlocks with all the other things that we're talking about our digital vulnerability to the digital gods is a par- one of the paramount things as we move forward it is used now against us to the point that our so-called science is now being told by the intercept, here, go use these materials to keep your bad science hidden from everybody till some future time. Atk- Atk- the Atkin- Atkinson story about what the DOJ would do, you found out, I think, through FOIAs, she had to do through for, an expense of forensic, digital forensics, to find out she had been intruded upon by the government itself getting confirmation through FOIA, being able to put those elements together to make a, a lawsuit that says that the, this is what they did. And they didn't have the right. All this just to keep the Republican form of representative government, keep the caucusocracy in check that is sitting there, and it's not just to be kept in check, but to be arrested, shows you the depth of the problem that we're in such that you would conceive of it if you would allow yourself to actually think about what we're up against and stop making the excuses it seems everybody does to settle in on little utopian ideas. I mean, again, I, I, I'm really torn here. I, I want to read. There's lots of stuff in here. By the time I get to it, by the end of the week, I, I, there's more information I see. There's more important things to talk about. If you don't see this stuff yourself, you read the black and white of these stories. Me talking to you means really nothing. I'm just, I'm just a babysitter. Uh, what was important about the Skype thing I was telling you about, and I'll read this part about it because I just, I just scrolled to it. Um, the intruders installed the periodically refreshed software used to extra, exfiltrate data, obtain Atkinson's passwords to various personal and work accounts, access the CBS News computer system, and monitor Atkinson's audio using a Skype account. Forensics also revealed evidence the United States government related involvement in the surveillance. There was the two parts that she needed to create. But here, remember, she, that burden was on her to have to do it. These criminals get away with it, even beyond her putting it together, because now she gets to go into the system and get mangled. And if she's really good about it, she'll, she'll, she'll avoid quite a few teeth and she'll come out all right. But all this time is a crime. This is delay of justice. This is planned into the system. You shouldn't be okay with this. 
I am not okay with the government attacking grantees in any fashion because that's a breach in the first order and then they make you go in through the process where they are in control of the decision. Is not the system that it was supposed to be and supposed to be maintained is your mission such that you will decide to step up to do it. How you get there, you're going to come to the same conclusions I am. It depends on how what trail you want to go down. It's all it all the crime comes from the same organized criminal syndicates. They're all working together. You're you're we will eventually. I told you a long time ago, like with William Roberts and I, a long time ago meeting. We never met, but I mean on the internet and talking, and we're standing shoulder to shoulder with this, looking at the same stinking abyss. At least to the each one of us, we weren't lying amongst ourselves. If all we ever had was the confirmation of one other, the other witness to the stinking abyss itself, the, what I call the stinking abyss, what the crime against us, that's all we needed, each one of us. We came by different paths to the same conclusion. Did that fix it? No. Now you start to worry, see the, the, the advance, uh, knowing a thing is not the doing, undoing, in this case, the undoing of a thing, or the doing of more right of a thing. That's not my my decision. That's not my rule. That's not my thing I can change and, and make it all go away for y'all. I, I can just talk to a handful of people that tend to want to listen all the time and, and hope, you, hope you're getting it. And I can tell over time you're getting stuff. You are getting things. Some of you are taking action. Some, some are, are taking action and still, not, and still learning that you have to do a little better. But you're actually stepping into the place where we start to move and we have a common idea about what needs to be done and not divisive against us to each other, not getting into what the, the, the inducements to be di divisive and or dysfunctional uh, has become. Uh, again, data is our, our downfall if we don't really pay attention. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that. If you're going to get involved, you really have to pay more attention. I can tell you. I don't do enough myself, and it's just trying to divide the energy to understand a lot of this. Making suggestions to people to do things that I think have a better mind about it, uh, might be able to put something together to make uh, 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 platforms and things that are a little bit more protective for us. Because we have weaknesses. Atkinson was uh, attacked. And she's a reporter. And she did some pretty interesting things. Don't go through, you need to read it. You need to see what they were doing. She's been on this thing for a long time. Finally figured out that they were tapping into her system. Had to come up with the proof. Now has to go through the situation about it. But the delay I, I call injustice because once you see that, the burden's on the other side in law. The burden was on the other side, which means you don't have law. What you have is organized criminals getting away with it until you actually can arrest them. And part of that is, is exposure. A number of people knowing. A lot of people knowing. And then someone has to take the fall. Someone becomes the scapegoat. For whom? But the duped leaders now have to out the conservation lobbyists. Right? See, and so you miss the fact that it's all still going on. And half of the syndicate gets lost. And they'll adapt, like they say their plan is, and they'll use a different method now. Why? Because you didn't kill the beast. You didn't go at the cause. You hit the effect. Or the tool. You knocked the tool out of their hand. So digital response is important. And I wasn't uh, going to talk about this next story. It's a part of things I've talked about. I don't focus on it too much. It's, I, I don't want to say it's painful like, uh, like pain, it's painful. It, it's it's a, a bit of a distress to me because I, in a way I failed even though I know I didn't fail. It wasn't my fault, the failure. But uh, 15 years ago now, I suppose it is, or more, a little bit more, doesn't matter, uh, I found out that the system was, uh, it was a project I was terming before the title, uh, Child Services. And that was to relate to the concept of adult services, but not in the educational sense. It was more in the streetwalker sense. That I, I found out inside the system that the system was covering up um, uh, well, it ended up being pedophilia. It's what you hear now. It's what you hear. I keep, I've told you this before. But I was going to pass this story because it's just too repulsive. And then I realized that there was a cover going on. 
because there's something blaringly missing in this story. And so I went back and grabbed it. And I think I got this from Gary L. on a, twi a Twitter uh, point, but I'm not sure. It doesn't, thank you, Gary. But, uh, it, so I, I got a hold of this. I went back and found it. I didn't want to even talk about this stuff. It's too repugnant to me. But covering it up, uh, uh, allowing the cover up now, the cover over, the curtain that's placed by this action, I felt was too serious to not go back and touch it for however uh, distasteful it is. Massive child sex ring busted in California. 474 arrested. 28 children saved. Now, I'm just going to give you the, 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 the rough high points. When you listen to the video that's attached to this, they, you got to listen very carefully. They skim across a whole lot of things that when you actually try to connect the dots, stops making sense about what they did to bust this so-called child sex ring. Then you find out they did it by confining and constraining their review. For as much as they say, this is a message to all the people doing this in California, that we're watching you. There's no place you can hide. Well, they constrained the victims of this plunder. I call it this way because I think it's covering something else way worse. Something I know sits there. Something I failed to be able to bring out as the documentary. That they, you will look and see, they constrained their victims to expose this ring to digital website forums and connections. They limited the scope of their net to uh, internet connections, internet uh, use. And I want you to get this and see this, because this is another method of the cover. That when you see what the constraint was, and then you look at how they describe it, I'm wondering how did they find 28 children when the program that they set up was essentially what you see on TV, these stings where they put an ad and they get somebody to go in and then they catch them. You know, they catch the perp going to the underage, supposed underage girls uh, or boys uh, house without their parents knowing. That's what this thing apparently was. How were 28 children saved in a program like that? Is my ignorance as to the totality of the operation, which they admit was limited to digital interaction. Your digital life was hacked. Uh, you were induced through this digital uh, forum, platform. That they... I want you to pay special attention that they don't ex name anybody that they caught. doesn't mean that they aren't there. Doesn't, I'm not saying that they're not there. What I'm suggesting to you is without naming who they are, you are not going to find, or uh, you will find only, if you find any, you will only find token officials in this sting that says that a child sex ring is busted. What you won't find, you will most likely, other than token people, you will not find judges. You will not find CSD member workers. You will not see prosecutors, attorneys, cops, uh, uh, the support systems. You will see none of their members involved in this thing. And while we watch the child sex ring that somehow 28 children were put in jeopardy over, which was supposed to be a digital interference, not someone that's actually doing something. It's a setup. You will not see, then hear, or understand the underlying actual human, we call human, the animal traffic, the, the trafficking that's going on, the sexual trafficking that's going on by the system itself. That I uncovered back when, not, it, was, it was known before, known way before. I was, I, but I had, I, had all the, I had the tools, I had all the video, I was making, it took a year, I was doing it right at the end of compiling this. It didn't even have a title on it yet. I was still right at the end, and I got myself collected up, and when I got done, I went back to my project. They collected me up. My project was gone. I've told you this story. And I told you at the time, I've told you periodically, I may be very lucky to be alive. And since then, I think I've seen evidence that's the case. Apparently, and I just heard that there was some uh, highly placed senator that did this uncovering a few years later. Uh, she and her husband are dead. Which, uh, but the difference, the distinction was I was a nobody. I was just some guy doing some video in a, in a public access center. Uh, but the word got out. And they effectively dealt with my project. They effectively dealt with the senator later by killing her and her husband, blaming the husband as a murder-suicide. That is the continuing cover-up of the systemic 
trafficking and pedophilia abuse of children, as I called the children's services. As distasteful as it is when I say that again, I want you to see we have what I was able to predict in Sandusky, going through the juvenile judges, that the two juvenile judges caught doing corruption. And I said, this, with the Sandusky connections over to Britain, makes this whole thing, expands this thing around the world, and you're going to watch how big this problem is. And look at what's happened. Look at what has happened, folks. That I'm sad, I'm, I'm, I feel failed a bit that I couldn't do it 10 years earlier, but that's, that wasn't going to happen. I'm so glad that people are stepping in to see. I'm so glad to see it, but I'm still seeing a deception. I think Gary L. and the suspect Sky have done their latest. You might want to look that up. I was, it, he's, he's passing it around right now. And it, it, it shows a bit of this going on. That this story in California, I'm telling you, and I can't prove it to you, but I'm telling you, based on what I found out in my documentary, this is covering up the official abuse and trafficking and pedophilia and system of abuse. And, uh, and I will go to the point and tell you it's satanic by their own discussion. I'm not calling them Satanists. I'm saying they say they follow these things. I'm telling you that in my documentary, we ha I had on tape lawmakers who were... A d um, they were terrified at what they found out after they allowed child services in and what they couldn't stop and what they couldn't check into. And they were terrified for their own grandchildren. These are the legislatures. Uh, legislators, excuse me. What I would call now in our other way, legislators. The, the guy, the, the senator, and it happened to be men, happened to, uh, th that came forward to talk on tape. Where, I mean, this was, uh, I just, you know, when you sit with someone and talk with them, this was not some po flashy politician. This was a, some rancher guy, uh, two rancher people. They were blown away at the type of, of corruption that there is. Sitting with them and talking with them, I felt that this was a truth. And, and it was a, and indisputable on top of it all. Backed up, their fears were backed up by other facts. So, uh, Again, uh, I don't know what we're going to do about this. I just don't want you to, to think it's like oh, that, that the government's doing something. I looked at every one of those people in the picture, and I'm sorry that I do this because it's like judging people. I said, you're all covering a crime, and, and I just said, you know it. You smug-looking jerks. Now, I don't know if anybody, though, any one of those knows that, but I tell you, folks, it's so systemic and so known and so covered up, it can't not be known. Did I say that right? They have to know about it. Let's put it back in the positive. And so, I apologize. I mean, really, it's just distasteful to talk about this. I just don't know where to begin with it. I'd, I'm appreciative that people are still, still on this, but people die around this stuff. Uh, I guess that's a warning to you all that want to roll your sleeves up on this matter, but there's something behind this. Uh, somebody's doing some covering up. There's another cat box cover up here, folks. They're covering up something. Somebody got close to somebody. I'll bet one or two of those people, or maybe a bunch of them, because there's a comment about a question of the arrest. Some weren't even involved, and they got arrested. I don't know that some of those weren't about to break some news. And this is one of the easiest ways to defeat their witness. It, again, dire condition. I just can't tell you how... I mean, I just want to go speechless here. This is so bad. This is so evil, folks. I just can't tell you. And if I, I guess if I hadn't done the, the documentary, spent my life, a year of my life working to get it done, I probably wouldn't be so, rest, it wouldn't be resting me so, di so hard till today. What I couldn't expose that is now becoming over time exposed and then covered. These people are brilliant how they cover this up. And so the cops are just not without protection or without their, their attorney reasoning, wordsmithing, about how they can do certain things and get away with it. And again, this is just part of the battlefield. This is not, I'm not trying to scare you off. I'm saying, listen, this is what's there. You have, this is a target-rich environment. You have to go to battle smart, intelligent, excuse me. Smart is what they'll make you, they'll make you into a digital a receptive device, of, of, a, a digital witness against yourself because you didn't protect yourself correctly. The cops can't be forced to return marijuana. Marijuana, excuse me, in a failed drug case. Uh, in fa failed drug cases, a Colorado Supreme Court says. 
Colorado Springs resident Robert Kroos, Kroos uh, was seeking reimbursement after police seized his marijuana. And the interesting little reason for this was, this is Colorado where it's legal, lawful, and I don't know if when he did the dirty deed, so to speak, they found it illegal what they did to him. He was asking for his marijuana back. Uh, they said, well, we can't force the cops to do so because to do so would be a violation of federal law. If you didn't think your states are federal entities. The return provision requires law enforcement officers to return or distribute marijuana, the decision says. The compliance with the return provision necessarily requires law enforcement, a, law enfor a law enforcement officer to violate federal law, was the statement, quote, I don't know how a return is to distribute unless you're perceived to be always in commerce by whatever the transaction, which means your cops are commerce. No, I should say enough said now. I mean, I can, my mind just blew up again. I, I can go off on this uh, and all the jurisdictions that are invoked. So your local poli police are subject to federal law if you thought there was a separation of the states and the powers. Uh, they are now considered being distributed just to return what they stole from you. And I w you need to really settle slowly with this story and think about the statuses, the authorities, the, what they're referring to, who's imposed by what, what this court recognized, understanding that the Supreme Court also did not strike down the effect of the federal. They said that the mere handing back, and dis it's not distribution, folks, it's returning stolen property. See, it depends on how the attorney frames it, isn't it? Notwithstanding all my opinion, they said that they don't have to return the marijuana they stole from you because federal law provides, uh, uh, prohibits that as a distribution. I don't know how they're going to say that was distribution for medical marijuana, but they did. This is what the, the attorney, a bar member in the seat of decision says. And so I wanted to turn one little thing over. You need to, again, read, see, familiarize yourself with this plunder that goes on. And look at all the cops that have now access to non-evidence they don't have to return or not have to account for, that now it's in a state that's legal. It, it, this is another way to more plunder. Like I said, it's plunder. But let me offer you something that I didn't see discussed. And it, this is, is an opinion, but based in some, uh, some study on, on the way they, they, they slice the onion, so to speak. The, the way they slice this so thin, they, they split that hair. It, it might be, folks, and it's, it is. It is that in, Calo in, in, in Colorado, you, they, the officers are not are considered distributing to return their sto the property they stole. That they can't do that. Let me offer to you all, and you can extend it maybe to Colorado and whatever else this might happen. They didn't say that the state was not, or the officers, the uh, department now, was not uh, uh, required to return the value that those plants illegally taken represent. All right, uh, maybe that was enough. I don't have to go further. The value, see, this is all based in value, money that they get, you know, Federal Reserve notes that they can kick you back. That So it's, otherwise it's a takings. They may not be able to rede redistribute the, the marijuana because federal law does not allow it, but the federal constitution provides that it can't be a takings either. The value must be returned. Maybe this gentleman needs to have his attorney, if he can't do it, petition the, um, uh, the department to return the money. The value instead. And I just wanted to offer that as an option to think about. Maybe help. I can't. I don't know these people. I don't have the time to go talk to them. Maybe some of you that are near and dear to this realize now you're under threat. Realize you can be right and be still be in the wrong. You not have your stuff taken. You see what just us in America is. You see the wordsmithing and the twisting of the Bar Association to comply with federal law. You see the connection to federal law. You see there's no distinction between the state and federal law in this commerce condition. And I've tried to explain to you how that's been a, a mischaracterization. That's also, you know, well, it's just unlawful to mischaracterize. That's a color of authority and position where you had or otherwise had a right, isn't it? But maybe this is also tied to the prospect of the legalization. Why I say non-criminalize it. Remember, we can't go to decriminalize now because Israel says that means we can lessen. And this is the proper reduction. 
uh, in this, in that, looking from their perspective, a decriminalization means it's still criminal, just lesser to a lesser extent. I now have to move you from where I was saying decriminalized. Now that I know that it's public notice to everybody that they're going to use decriminalized in its uh, criminalized but lesser st segment, we have to move for non-criminalization. We have to remove this stuff from being something that the federal government can have cognizance over as a uh, commerce uh, product and in distribution. And then I'm going to have to tell you that you're going to have to go against that wheat case because they're going to say anything you grow in the land they can control. That's a lie. That's a misinterpretation. It's a, that's a, a fiduciary breach of their obligations in your state's enabling acts. You have a right of the product of your soil that came with the grant. Unless there's a reservation in the grant, the patent against it, that, are, that position has not been stated. And how you would fight that essentially would be to say, I'm going to color, clear the color of the title that's been placed by this wrongful, unlawful, felonious imposition. And then when they try to come to answer, you shut them out by saying, show your title to my land, where it says right here to my heirs, signs and heirs or whatever, and I can show that I'm going to sign, uh, and, because that's probably what you're going to be, and it doesn't have a reservation. You show your title into this court before you can come and defend. They can't show up, you win. Now that was kind of truncated. The corruption may not allow it, but that's the way the law should actually work. That's how fast this is supposed to be. You're not supposed to be delayed to justice where you have the right, that's the presumption upon the government, the obligation and duty to protect you all in whatever you can find. So the cops can keep your pot. Now I'm telling you, consider, don't, again, I guess the point is, that's a cover for maybe another option. Remember, I keep telling you, one of the major problems with the courts is they will decide a case on a certain frame-up, and they will disregard any other one not presented to them. In practice, I can tell you, I, you can put a thousand different premises, and they will destroy every one of them uh, uh, just because they can. Not entertain, not look at, not even be entertained by any of it. You can go through every argument you can find, and what the system will do will put it in the one they want to decide. That's not justice. If we had justice, the executive branch, the DOJ, could be petitioned for going after that judge for malfeasance and delinquency and acting without actual authority. That's a felony, folks. That's not in the office. I'm going fast again here, and these are what we have to do. When I start hearing a whole lot of us doing it the right way, that way, I, I'm going to be a lot better. Maybe I can take a day off. And yeah, probably not. Remember, this is a war. The war never ends. I don't care if they call it, there's a sea. Someone's going to get bombed or something. Some, some artillery's going off somewhere because we're just not that cool anymore about ourselves. And it's a sad thing. Cops are not above the theft and then being rewarded for it. A city, but, but, but they can be caught, folks. So this is what I'm saying. You have to put them back, the monster back in the box that was the cage it's in not let them put you in the cage it's, it's created that doesn't exist. City agrees to pay $56.5 million to people written bogus tickets by the New York Police Department. If you thought that the police were all shiny white, and if you, any of you out there thought that you know, the, the cops can do no wrong, $56 million worth of wrong, folks, at least. What they end up paying is about seventy five from taxpayer money See, nobody gets, a, there's no accountability here. And uh, there needs to be. At some point, we're going to have to step up and understand how to discuss that. But New York City has agreed to pay out as much as $75 million of taxpayer money to settle a long-running class action lawsuit regarding hundreds of thousands of bogus summonses the lawyers allege were the product of NYPD's quota system. Okay, so uh, you can go read that for yourself. You need to see what they're saying. Uh, the Some bogus summonses, what is that? No, but, the, but you... Of doing a set aside, if it's offered in uh, um, offered in New York, it's a pre plea remedy and avoidance about the bogusness of the summons. If you can tie it and had proof of the quota system, you include that. Well, uh, folks, you don't you don't even have to. Uh, I wouldn't even look too hard, but if they have it, I'd be looking at how they prove that. You need to get that collection for yourself. It's happening everywhere. You don't need a quota system, though. All I need to tell you as a cop is that we may not be able to give you that overtime you want, or we may not be able to keep you in a job if we don't get a certain amount of business out the street. And guess what, folks? You're going to write those tickets. It's pretty simple. I've talked about this before. I don't. Again, for me now, it's... I'm so long into this, I don't think there's anything new I can actually say. I just say it a different way. Come to the same point 
over and over and over. And I don't know how many times I keep coming to the same point that proves it, that I get people that won't agree with what I'm saying or say that it, it doesn't, doesn't work that way. And won't lift a finger to go prove how it works any other way. So here's some more proof. They even have a link to a quota system. I'm not sure. I can't remember now what they what that point's about. They actually have a bogus summonses a link you can go to. You need this happens across the country, folks. I've told you this over and over again. Oh yeah, we know that. I'm telling you, you need to take this information as evidence. And whether you fight someone else's fights, I don't want to even get into. Once you decide that you're going to stop this, you prepare for the event to happen to you. Now, you may, not, you may find that it doesn't happen now because you are prepared, but that's not, neither stand, notwithstanding. It'll give you insight to everything else. That when the code enforcement officer comes to raise revenue, the revenuer comes, you have a word in your mouth, and if you won't listen to that, then you have your first step into the courts, which is your plea, plea, plea remedy and avoidance, and if that won't work, you get the judge for malfeasance in office. Now, you're also in a delay of justice, so that's a felony against you as well, and it's fiduciary breach. You just line it all out, folks. What do I do? I keep giving you all the lines to say. And they're not that many. And I hear nobody doing much about it. They would rather, I guess, do other things. And for some of you, great. I mean, you found a position you don't have to, but I look around and I don't see that. I don't really see that gen gen generally. So I'm, I'm going to break some ice here. It goes a little bit off topic. But it, it, it speaks to this idea of uh, revenue enhancement, uh, but in a weird way, uh, as I move through, I'm going to break some ice because I haven't been able to get to this point all weeks, and i got a couple here going. Uh, w wait till your local government, as they militarize your, your government, wait till they do this to you that the Pentagon is already doing uh, testing right now. that successfully tests micro drone swarms. The Pentagon may soon be unleashing a 21st century version of the locusts on its adversaries, as officials on Monday said that uh, it had successfully tested a swarm of 103 micro drones. The important step in the development of the new autonomous weapons system was uh, made possible by improvements in artificial intelligence, uh, holding open the possibility that groups of small robots would act together under human direction. Little animal running the little AIs to swarm you. There, there was a video about this new um, robot that runs on wheels now. It has legs up front. It's a hybrid. Wheels on the back and legs up front. And that thing, they, they said it was a, the, the stuff of nightmares. When you watch how fast this thing is on these, these, it's a refrigerator essentially on wheels with legs. When you watch how this thing stands up and r how fast it goes on its wheels, it is a bit terrifying to understand this is AI of the future. That they're all going to put those these things in integrated swarms is the stuff of science fiction that is being tested successfully now that is going to come to a local jurisdiction near you. If that don't scare you crickets into action, I don't know what is. You need to see what they're doing to us. Thank you for tuning in today. Hope I had said, said something that will kind of get you moving. Just get you motivated. Start learning what you need to do a little bit better and be the force that you are. Uh, though you haven't really exercised that. And thank you for all the contributions and donations you can make to RLM in this moment that we need to ask to fulfill uh, the costs of all the servers and things and those other items. Uh, thank you again to Grimner for all his uh, his e efforts and the integrity which, which he brings together, the platform that we all, all use, and you get to hear whatever it is you think I'm saying, even if you disagree with it. It's, I get to come here and do it uh, every weekend. Do it. It's like an is. Uh, thank you to uh, Bo Diddy and uh, Grimner again for Freedoms Network, the social, ne freedomsnetwork.com, the social network. Uh, Jewels over 200 or more or whatever it was, you're simulcasting. Thank you at ucy.com for the simulcasting. And uh, terrestrial broadcasters, I appreciate what you're doing uh, to uh, give it to, uh, send out the message on the airwaves uh, for those people that have radios. And uh, I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs, uh, nature willing, folks.